We looked at squares and cubes, and now we're basically going to look at the opposite, which are square roots and cube roots. What do I mean by opposites? Well, I mean this. If we know 3 squared is 9, then we immediately know that the square root of 9 is 3. Because when I ask for the square root of 9, I'm asking myself what number multiplied by itself will give me 9. And the answer to that is 3. Similarly, 2 cubed is 8. 2 times 2 times 2 gives you 8. And that immediately tells you that the cube root of 8 is equal to 2. Because when I'm asking for the cube root of 8, I'm asking what number multiplied together 3 times gives you 8. And we can extend this to fractions. So I can, for example, ask you for the cube root of 27 over 125. And hopefully you can quite easily see that that is going to be 3 over 5. Why? Because 3 times 3 times 3 gets you back to the 27, and 5 times 5 times 5 is what gets you back to the 125. I could also ask you something like 160 over 250, take the square root of that. Well, the problem with this one is, you can't immediately give me the answer as to what multiplied by itself will give you 160. Because 40 times 40 is 1,600, right? So what is it that multiplied by itself gives you 160? You're not going to be able to easily do that in your head. But what you can do here is you can simplify this fraction as you always have done. Um, and so you can see you can divide 10 into top and bottom and you will get 16 over 25. And now you can take the square root with no problem because the square root of 16 is 4 and the square root of 25 is 5. And just a quick reminder, if you went ahead and learnt all these facts like I suggested you did last time, you've also learnt your square root facts. Because immediately from this table, you can know that the square root of 81 is 9. Or you know, for example, that the cube root of 64 is 4. And this will be very useful to know immediately.